A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Pearl of the Indian Ocean. We are very happy to receive all of you here in Colombo, Sri Lanka, at the DI, DHIS2 Asia Pacific Conference 2023. Over the next few days, this year's conference aims to provide plenty of opportunities to discuss latest DHIS2 features and share knowledge and insights and build new partnerships and collaborations. And I'm so glad that this year we are joined by over 100 participants from various parts of the globe. On behalf of His Sri Lanka, I wish each of you a pleasant and a fruitful stay during your time in Sri Lanka. Keeping in line with the rich traditions of Sri Lanka and giving light to this event, let us now begin the lighting of the oil lamp. For this, I call upon the following dignitaries. Representing the Ministry of Health Sri Lanka, Dr. Palita Karuna Perma, Director of Health Information. Vidya Jyoti, Professor Vajra Disanayaka, Dean, Faculty of Medicine, Colombo. Dr. Chaminda Virabhadana, Consultant in Health Information. Dr. Kal Sharlia Kasuri Consultant Community Physician, Family Health Bureau. Dr. Pandula Siribaddana, Postgraduate Institute of Medicine. Representing Sri Lanka College of Health Informatics, the President, Dr. Prasad Ranatunga. The Secretary, Dr. Udita Pereira. Representing the Ministry of Education, Sri Lanka, Ms. Dakshina Kasriyarachi, Director of Data Management Unit, and Ms. Saumya Sena Ratna, Deputy Director of the Data Management Unit. And Mr. Mahesh hmm? Pereira, the, the Chief Executive Officer of Information and Communication Technology Agency in Sri Lanka. And representing all his nodes of the Asian region, Mr. Saurabh Lee Ka, Coordinator of the HISP Asia Hub, and Mr. Ola, Deputy Director of the HISP Center, University of Oslo, Norway, and Professor Jan Bra, University of Oslo, Norway, and last but not the least, Dr. Pamod Amarakon, Team Lead in Sri Lanka. Thank you to our distinguished guests. And you take your seat. First and foremost, to welcome our distinguished guests, 
I call upon on stage the team lead of His Sri Lanka, Dr. Pamod Amarakon. Over to you, sir. Very good morning to all of you and I, Bowen. On behalf of the organizing committee of uh, HISP Asia Hub, I would like to welcome all of you to this beautiful island of Sri Lanka, the pearl of the Indian Ocean, and also to the second edition of the DHS2 Asia Pacific Conference uh, in Sri Lanka. I would also like to specially welcome all the invited guests who have been great patrons of uh, digitalization process in Sri Lanka. Uh, this event was ex expected to be attended uh, by the Honorable Health Minister and the State Minister of uh, Health in Sri Lanka. But unfortunately, due to some urgent commitments at the Parliament of Sri Lanka today morning, they informed that they are not able to make it, but they wanted to extend their best wishes for this event. And this venue, uh, the Taj Samudra Hotel Grand Crystal Ballroom, is a historic venue. The building itself is 200 years old, dating all the way back to the colonial times. And here in this event, uh, we are really excited that we have a record-breaking number of participants. So this year we have, as of now, 114 participants representing more than 25 countries 25, as in 25 countries of ministries of health. And in addition, we have so many different uh, partners who are supporting in DHS to implementation, especially in the Asia Pacific region. So you see like uh, flags of most of the countries here and the breakdown. So uh, as expected, we have the most number of participants this year from the host country, which is Sri Lanka, followed by Pakistan and many other countries. By the way, this list does not include all our guests from the University of Oslo, who of course are coming from all over the world. I'm pretty sure that DHS2 platform is no news to the audience here because most of you are experts in DHS2 and you are all gathered here to share the experiences, network and talk to everyone and kind of spread uh, the news of what you are doing in all your countries. However, just to brief everyone of the DHS2 platform, it's of course is the largest health management information system platform, which is uh, uh, in, implemented in more than 100 countries globally. And uh, it's not only present in the health domain, we have the representatives from the Ministry of Education of Sri Lanka here. So we are in, in Sri Lanka itself, we are using DHS2 in the education sector as well. And there are many other sectors DHS2 is being used. And that is why it's one of the most uh, highly reputed, most scaled a digital public good in the entire world. So it is a generic platform and which makes it so easy for anyone to use. Right, So it is not just the IT professionals or the developers or software programmers. It is anybody. We have trained field health staff not even to enter data, but even to analyze and use the data that they have captured at field level. And with all this, it is now serving more than 2.4 billion people in the world. And the most important thing about DHIS2 is what we promote as HISP is a country ownership. We are just there to support and guide you, but it's up to the country to own their platform and to customize it and, and as well as use the data as they wish. And we have an extensive community uh, around DHIS2, which is led by the HISP network. So talking about the HISP, HISP network is pretty old. We have Professor Yon Brow here, who's the founder of DHIS2. So it all started three decades ago. And, it, and we have a really big legacy. And uh, when it comes to his nodes, we have more than 22 nodes globally. And out of them, the nodes which are present in Asia, Asia Pacific region, which are listed here, and we will be talking more about different uh, his nodes uh, uh, shortly. So all these nodes get together as a DHIS2 or HISP Asia hub, right? So this HISP Asia hub, there's a lot of collaborative activities 
to implement DHIS2 to support the countries and to kind of share the best, the best practices which are regionally important. So what do you expect to see in the next three days? So it's, it's a three days of conference and academy, meaning like it will not be just presentations. You will have hands-on sessions and you will have a lot of opportunities to share your experience. We are, we are excited to hear that more than 15 countries will have uh, dedicated sessions to share the experiences, challenges, and the best practices that they are using when implementing DHIS2. And you will have a lot of opportunities to network with everyone in the region. So more than 110 participants is a, it's a very big number. So we, we really hope that you will make best use of your time. In addition to all these very academic oriented activities, we, uh, we have made sure that you will also have a uh, lot of time to enjoy Sri Lanka and to socialize. So uh, you will, uh, we will have a, a dinner, a social dinner, uh, which is happening today. And then we have arranged another city tour, but uh, more, more information about them a bit later, right? So this is a brief overview of what to expect in the next, next three days. But make sure you just socialize, network, and enjoy Sri Lanka. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your words of welcome and insight. And I'm happy to see that Professor Vajra Disanayaka has joined us. Welcome, sir. Sri Lanka, as you all may know, boasts rich culture and tradition. And unsurprisingly, it spans to our entertainment sector as well. So for you to give a brief glance into our rich tradition and culture, we have arranged for you a cultural event, and it will grace the stage now. Please welcome with a big round of applause.
A very big round of applause once again, ladies and gentlemen, for that majestic performance. Thank you. May I now invite Dr. Palita Karuna Peruma, Director of Health Informatics, Ministry of Sri Lanka, to speak a few words on behalf of the conference. Over to you, sir. Good morning to all of you. Hi, Bowen. It's uh, indeed a great pleasure to be here. And uh, I thank His Sri Lanka for inviting, kindly extending the invitation to Minister of Health uh, for this very important conference. Professor John Bra, uh, His Asia Coordinator, Mr. Swarab uh, Isha, and all the his no, uh, no, notes in different countries and distinguished participants. Uh, this is uh, yet another very important event in uh, DHS2 calendar. Uh, if Sri Lanka uh, been partnered with the Minister of Health for last few years and and are very instrumental in uh, customizing, developing, and uh, deploying many applications uh, within the Ministry of Health. Uh, so it is very a successful story about the DHS2 implementation in Sri Lanka. So I suppose the whole uh, idea behind this uh, inception, Professor John had with this DHS2, I think it's realized to a great extent in Sri Lanka. Uh, I suppose it's the same in many other countries. Uh, now, Minister of Health uh, is very much uh, transforming the health sector uh, in digital transformation. And even the government is now very much focused on uh, digitalization of the many sectors, including health. And very recently, I, I think uh, uh, Professor Vajra also uh, the part of this team about this uh, uh, privatization of health sector. And they have identified the digitalization as uh, one key component of this uh, revitalization of this strategy. So DHS2 uh, is as the open source software. And so it, it, it can actually uh, provide very solid uh, platform for many uh, applications uh, and many uh, healthcare interventions. So we would uh, very happy as a ministry uh, to embrace this and uh, foster this uh, process. And about few months back with the DH uh, History Lanka, uh, we again uh, uh, initiate the community of practice for DHS2, and now it's very much fostering and new generation of health informaticians uh, taking a lead. So it's very happy to see that. And uh, I suppose uh, that's the way forward because we need the human capital to take this uh, and move forward with this DHS2. And especially now with the, our digital health blueprint is in place and many integration will require. Uh, and definitely, I think uh, one of the discussion will be here probably about the, how this DHS2 can integrate with the bigger platforms, so with other systems. Uh, I I, uh, I I know that Pramod is playing a very vital role and his Sri Lanka is a very vital role uh, over the last few years. So thank you very much for this uh, uh, Pramod. And uh, with that uh, note, and I wish uh, this conference will be a very successful one and this uh, will be able to take many lessons learned from other countries and share the experiences and uh, probably we can take those uh, uh, results at the end of the conference. Uh, again, from the Ministry of Health, we will we wish a very successful conference uh, 
and very successful uh, uh, participation and enjoy Sri Lanka. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your kind words, and we look forward to future collaborations with His Sri Lanka. I would like to now call upon on stage Professor Vajradisa Nayaka. He is the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, Sri Lanka, and he is also the Chairperson of the Specialty Board in Biomedical Informatics, Postgraduate Institute, University of Colombo. Over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Professor Yondra, our longtime friend, Dr. Palita Karunapema, the Director of Information of the Ministry of Health, um, leaders of the uh, HISP network, Sri Lanka, as well as all the Asian countries, other distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a pleasure for me to uh, talk to you this morning. My mind goes back to the year 2007 when I got an email from uh, Sandeep Sahe, Yon's colleague at Oslo, telling us that uh, Oslo is uh, doing a lot of work in Africa and uh, that they would like to come to Asia and uh, they would like to work with Sri Lanka to begin with. I replied uh, positively to that email and then soon after that, Sandeep, Yon and uh, myself, we sat together and uh, developed a funding proposal to NORAD. We were successful in that uh, funding application. And in 2008, we started what was and probably what is the only, uh, what is today's day, the only masters in biomedical informatics and the MD in health informatics program in the world which leads to board certification of doctors as consultant health informaticians. That is the unique contribution that uh, Oslo Colombo collaboration has made to, I should say, the world, because the only other country in the world where you can, uh, I think, become a board certified consultant in health informatics for medics on par with any other medical speciality in the world is USA. USA board certified doctors in clinical informatics, Sri Lanka board certified doctors in health informatics. And today we have uh, one of the largest workforces. We have produced more than 300 master's graduates. We have produced more than 75 MD graduates. Of them, uh, more than 20 now have gone on to become board certified consultants. They are all leading uh, the digitalization efforts in Sri Lanka. We have the leadership of that, uh, you know, the students, they were students, but our colleagues now were spearheading the stuff under the leadership of uh, Dr. Palita Karuma Pema. We have Dr. Uh, um, Prasad um, uh, Ranatunga, who is now the uh, president of the Sri Lanka College of Health Informatics. Uh, the professional college of all the health informaticians uh, taking the lead. I think um, Dr. Chaminda uh, Virabhadana uh, is taking over from him next year. Uh, so we've been able to create something unique. So that seed that was planted in Asia in 2007, Yon, I'm really happy to see has spread across Asia. Um, so what we started uh, in uh, Colombo has uh, spread across Asia. And uh, for you to have brought the entire network here uh, is wonderful. And I'd like to uh, congratulate all of you um, for the wonderful work that you all are doing to strength health, strengthen health systems uh, through digitalization. The importance of uh, the uh, 
DHIS2 work, which um, I know was um, Yon's uh, PhD project. Uh, and what it has done, the transformation change that it has done to the world um, goes volume to show that the little seeds that you plant in academia has wider application across the across into practice and transcending boundaries and becoming global. Let me relate to you two or three exp uh, two or three examples of what I can tell you has transformed digitalization in Sri Lanka through uh, DHIS2. The first example was the uh, what was called the electronic reproductive health information system, ERHMIS2. Maybe during the course of this week, uh, the, the next three days, you may hear about it. We were able to digitalize and transform the entire maternal and child health information um, flow in this country on the DHI2 platform. Within a period of six months, when we started this project in 2016, a completely manual-based system was completely transformed into a digital system. And the only, uh, I mean, this is um, a classic story of, you know, you doing a countrywide system without any impact on the health budget because the uh, uh, platform is free. We have trained our health informaticians on uh, customizing DHIS2. They were all government employees, so they were, you didn't have to pay them anything. They were doing their job. So you had a free platform, people who were trained, who were deploying, uh, customizing and deploying a countrywide system. So today, we have, at any given time, more than 500,000 pregnant women. That's the entire cohort of pregnant women in the country. And more than 4 million children under five years followed up through that information flow. A system that was deployed without any investment, as it were. Obviously, there had to be a little bit of investment on training and other things, but not the huge, big investments that we look at. So that's one example of capacity development and its impact. The second example I want to highlight is that once you have a platform like that, you can innovate on the platform. So that's a platform which um, Pamod, who spoke to you at the beginning, championed as his master's project. We wanted to monitor all the malnourished children in the country and ensure that they are not malnourished. Again, a system was developed on the DHS2 platform. The entire backbone was DHS2. The innovation on top of that was a smartphone app, which at that time cost us only about uh, 10,000 US dollars to uh, develop through uh, getting the developers. The system was deployed and we were monitoring children in the community, so much so that it was GIS enabled. You could go, you could be you know, from Columbus, uh, you know, look at a rural village down 100, uh, 200 kilometers away and say down a particular road in a particular house, there is a malnourished child and these child needs to be looked after. That kind of uh, granularity we went down to with such little investment because we were innovating on the platform. In fact, in uh, 2016 or 17, uh, that innovation won the World Summit Award, which you know is the award which is uh, coming from the ITU and the um, uh, and their initiatives, and it was ranked the top 
innovation from you know uh, applications coming from 178 countries in the world so this is a kind of transformative change that the seed planted by yon had brought about in sri lanka and i'm sure that is bring about that kind of transformational change in your countries as well so we owe a debt of gratitude as well as an appreciation for the work that Jon and his team has done. The final example that I wanted to tell you is the example of COVID. Uh, in uh, January 2020, as COVID was breaking, um, at Achala, Pomod, uh, uh, you know, and um, Roshan Hevapatirana, who is not here today, um, and a few others came and uh, said, uh, "Sir, we have a problem. You know, there's a global pandemic going to break out." It wasn't declared a pandemic in January uh, 2020, but the information systems to capture and report are not there. The HIS2 is there in 70 odd countries. Let's customize the HIS2 and get ready. Uh, Pandula is also here. He was also part of the team. And uh, we um, discussed with uh, a Sri Lankan company who was involved, WSO2. Um, and uh, you know we uh, got a fantastic uh, open source company which does this work. And the CEO just like hosted us uh, in his uh, office. I can remember like uh, by the time you know we were slowly coming to the lockdowns and nobody was there. And one day in the evening, uh, five of us were in this room and uh, these, um, you know, our young people were sitting there and planning how to customize. So the original DHS to COVID package was um, uh, basically customization happened in a little room uh, down one of those uh, these roads uh, very close by here. Um, and uh, you know the rest of the story. Uh, it got um, very soon um, uh, went global. So uh, I'm sure that all of you have uh, inspiring stories like that, uh, that um, you can relate, you can talk about. Uh, and that speak volume for the work that you are doing uh, in your countries to strengthen healthcare, as well as to um, ensure that your population remains healthy. The biggest challenge um, all of our, our countries are facing at the moment, whenever I go across the world, uh, you know, in my roles in the Commonwealth as well as other Asian roles, is uh, health workforce migration. And um, that's especially affecting countries which are speaking um, English and using English as their uh, working language. Sri Lanka is losing about 25% of its healthcare workforce, all categories, within the next five years. That's uh, a prediction. Um, wearing another hat that I wear as the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Council. So we have no way other than uh, digitalization to meet with these challenges. And we need to do it faster than ever before. And we will need to do it in all our countries faster than ever before. And we will have to be able to also look at cross-border um, sharing of data and uh, uh, expertise and other resources as well. So the network that has been built uh, in Asia through DHS2 is a fantastic network. And we should all work together, help each other, and uh, collaborate uh, with each other. And I hope that uh, the um, meeting that you are having in Colombo today uh, is um, going to inspire all of you uh, to grow this collaborative network further and uh, to build um, sustained, resilient health systems that can withstand all challenges. With those words, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me uh, to come over and speak a, a few words uh, this morning. Um, I had uh, three other invitations at the same time. 
uh, to speak. Uh, so I've been going from one to another. So that, uh, so please do excuse me. I came after one and I'll be leaving after this talk uh, and uh, to for another uh, similar event. Uh, but I hope that you will enjoy uh, you know, the hospitality uh, of Sri Lanka as well as enjoy Colombo and um, go over to the Lotus Tower and see whether you can see uh, your country from the top of Lotus Tower, which is uh, the, the tallest tower in uh, South Asia. And uh, I hope you'll also come back in the future uh, for similar meetings, as well as bring your uh, you know, colleagues and friends and family and enjoy the hospitality of Sri Lanka. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for gracing us this occasion, despite your busy schedule. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this actually concludes the inauguration ceremony of the DHIS2 Asia-Pacific Conference 2023. We will now proceed with the formal agenda at the end of this short video. Have a pleasant stay in Sri Lanka. Thank you. As we all move forward, don't forget to get plenty of sunshine. Drink lots of water. Remember to really breathe. Stretch. Spend time with the people you love. Find your balance. Focus on the important things. Rest. Eat healthy. Laugh a lot. Soak it all in. And remember who we are. So strong, so resilient, so Sri Lanka. Good morning, everyone. So we'll start with the formal uh, agenda now, and we'll start with the round of introductions. Uh, so we'll, in interest of time, we'll carry out the introductions in a way that I'll call out the name of the ministries of health and the countries available here, and the followed by the partner organizations. And I would request the representatives to please stand. And I'll request the fellow participants to please acknowledge and their presence and give them a warm welcome. Okay. So we'll start with the Ministries of Health first. So I'll request the participants from Ministry of Health Sri Lanka to please stand and uh, for a warm welcome from all the participants. Ministry of Health Sri Lanka. Okay. So we'll do next, we'll have Ministry of Health Nepal. Thank you. Ministry of Health Bangladesh. Thank you. 
मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ पाकिस्तान मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ इंडोनेशिया मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ वियतनाम मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ ताजिकिस्तान मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ उजबेकिस्तान मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ वानुआतु मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ सोलोमन आइलैंड्स मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ मॉलडीव मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ ईस्ट मोर मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ भूटान मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ लाओ मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ किर्गिस्तान आई थिंक दिस स्टिल ऑन द वे मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ लीबिया वेलकम सर मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ इजिप्ट मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ जॉर्डन मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ इथियोपिया So I'll request you to please stand so that everyone can see you. Thank you. And Minister of Health, Yemen. So we welcome all the colleagues from the Minister of Health and thank you for your active participation and taking your time out for the conference. Uh, now we'll start with the partner organizations. Uh, so all representatives from the World Health Organization, we request you to please stand up. WHO. Uh, FHI three hundred and sixty. Mercy Corps, Pakistan. UNAIDS. Colleagues from UNICEF. Uh, UKSHA. I think this. I think this still arriving. The Fred Hollows Foundation, Apt Associates, Health Protection Agency, Maldives, Brag, Bangladesh, Orbis International. Thank you, everyone. So now I'll ask uh, the team from University of Oslo to please stand and for the participants to acknowledge you. Now we have the his group. So I'll request his Bangladesh team. His from Indonesia. His from India. His Sri Lanka, His Mina, His Vietnam, and His Pakistan. So thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll have a lot of opportunities to meet and greet during the tea breaks and the lunch sessions. So uh, we hope you all have a enjoyable stay out of the next three days in Sri Lanka. Moving forward, we'll quickly review the agenda that we planned for you uh, for the next three days. So currently, we are on the session for introductions uh, and agenda review, followed by uh, a brief on the conference logistics by Dr. Pamod. We'll have a quick presentations as a welcome from the His Asia Hub, where we'll. You'll get to know more on the uh, global health network and the regional and the collaboration between the University of Oslo, and a brief update on the activities that the Hispatia have carried out during the last couple of years. 
followed by the tea break, we'll have a quick session from uh, Austin uh, on uh, what's new in DHIS2 to give you a, a flavor of the new uh, and upcoming features in DHIS2. Uh, we have Phil who will be giving more insights on how the participants being DHIS2 users can report the bugs and a, a quick review on the DHIS2 roadmap and the future releases. We have country presentations. So we have scheduled uh, slots for each country to present a brief on their HMIS implementations in country. So uh, each day you'll have some country representative presenting the use cases to understand how the countries have implemented DHIS2, what have been their um, achievements, the challenges and the lessons that have learned from their implementations. Then next we have some parallel sessions, which are a mix of DHIS2 um, uh, topics, both in terms of implementation guidance as well as the software development. So soon we'll also do a Mentimeter exercise where we'll uh, take your interest in which sessions are more interested and we will ask you to uh, send your responses as well. So we have system a parallel session on governance and system evaluations where we look at the core principles behind creating and managing DHS to implementations and what are the available frameworks for system evaluations and knowing the maturity of the DHS to implementations in country. We'll have a parallel session on toolkit implementation. So the University of Oslo and WHO Geneva have been working for many years in developing uh, these uh, health program toolkits for different programs, which many of the countries have already implemented. So we'll give an update on the latest developments in that area. Uh, this will be followed by a social event. Uh, Dr. Pamod will be sharing more details on that. So day two, we'll start with the uh, LMIS session where Breno from UIO team will give updates on the uh, exciting work that is happening at the LMIS front and how DHS is being positioned in that respective domain. And we'll also have Michael from the security team who will be discussing the risk and threats uh, on our DHS implementations and how the uh, ministries and the organizations can mitigate those uh, risks, making your DHS implementations more secure. We'll have another round of country presentations tomorrow uh, where the countries will be presenting their experience. Then we'll have two parallel sessions, one for the LMIS where it will be hands-on session on data collection tools and dashboards. And we'll have another parallel session uh, on security. So the participants can choose the topic of their choice and can, uh, so we have uh, the crystal ballroom as the main plenary session and we have one Gregory Hall downstairs which is the uh, the venue for the breakout sessions. So we'll inform everyone on the sessions when it, where it is happening so that the participants can move accordingly. Then we have two uh, uh, parallel sessions, one on data quality. So we'll have a look at the DHS2 data quality toolkit and some hands-on demonstrations on the data quality features. And we have one interesting session on One Health and Climate. This is a new domain where we're trying to see how DHS2 can be influential in managing the data triangulation between the climate and health. So we'll having one parallel session on that as well. Day three, we start a plenary session with uh, GIS and maps. So we'll have a look at the latest features and developments that have happened um, in on the maps application and how we can how it can be further extended to uh, to other gis softwares uh, working with dhis2 then we have another session on integration to understand the uh, latest developments on the integration interoperability front uh, with the work being done at the university of Oslo team uh, we'll again have a round of country presentations uh, to hear about the experiences of countries in dhis2 implementations then after lunch, we have two parallel sessions, uh, one on the maps, which will have more demonstrations and hands-on activities. And we have one more session on uh, some additional programs for nutrition and the cause of death app that has been developed and how these uh, applications work in integration with the DHIS2 implementations. And then on the final session would be to get final feedback from you on how the events were planned for the for the uh, three days and what are the areas of improvement that you could suggest for us to improve for the next year's conference. And we'll close the session uh, with the close of remarks. So you have been emailed this agenda uh, uh, on emails. If you have, haven't received it, please let us know. We'll do the needful and share the agenda with you guys. 
So I'll request Dr. Pomo to please come and uh, discuss the logistics with him. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So um, as the uh, host, uh, it's my responsibility to brief about the logistics. So most importantly, it's about the first thing is about uh, food and refreshments. So we will be having two tea breaks, one in the morning and one in the afternoon and the lunch. So the tea breaks uh, will be uh, the tea and coffee and some snacks will be served uh, each day at uh, 1030 in the morning and 330 in the afternoon in the foyer area just uh, outside here. So that's where the tea is served. And the lunches, of course, will be arranged behind uh, the main uh, meeting area here at the same venue. So uh, this, this will be around 1231. So it will be served there. And you can come back and have the uh, lunches here in the room. And also uh, uh, the washrooms we have at two locations. So we have up here on to your left. Uh, the washrooms and we also have in case uh, if uh, the washrooms are crowded during uh, the breaks you can also use the washrooms which are uh, on the floor below downstairs we also have it and our team will uh, is happy to direct you in case if you have any uh, issue finding them uh, and also for the conference we are having two venues the main venue will be here uh, which is called grand crystal ballroom and the next hall for the breakout sessions will be the Gregory Hall, which is downstairs. So we will have signboards directing you to find the Gregory Hall. And we will be taking a group photograph, the conference group photograph, which uh, we are planning to take at the tea break, the morning tea break today. And it will be at, in the lawn area downstairs. So our team will direct you to the uh, photo location so you can have your tea at 1030. And once it is done, our team will announce uh, where to move and they will direct you. So we are planning to take the conference uh, photo uh, at around 1045, roughly. So uh, please make sure you are present. Uh, otherwise, it will be very difficult for us to kind of insert you later if you are not in the group photograph. Right. Um, the next thing, as I mentioned uh, in my initial presentation, it's not all about discussions, presentations, and group work. Uh, we will have two social events. One is uh, the, the dinner. So the gala dinner will be uh, tonight uh, at a different venue, uh, which will be Cinnamon Lakeside Hotel. So we will be arranging transport for all of you uh, to go there. So it will be starting roughly around 7 p.m. If there are any changes uh, uh, due to our uh, plan today, the agenda and all, we will announce the exact time uh, once we finish today. Right? That's the first uh, social event. And uh, we don't finish there. Uh, we have arranged you a Colombo city tour. So the thing is, you may have, uh, if you have been here in Colombo last few days, you may have realized um, evenings in Colombo these days, uh, we are expecting a lot of showers. So let's see uh, how it's going to uh, work out tomorrow. But what we have arranged, uh, we have arranged uh, two buses, which has an open upper deck uh, and, of course, a covered lower deck. Uh, for you to go around the Colombo city. So we have arranged a couple of attractions. Uh, we'll be, we are planning to go to one Buddhist temple uh, nearby and then uh, one very historic monument in Colombo called Independence Square. And if time permits, we are also planning to take you to the uh, popular Lotus Tower. So that's the plan. And uh, this city tour will happen tomorrow evening around 5.30. That's what we are planning for now. But if there are any changes uh, in time scheduling, we will let you know. And finally, uh, I hope all of you may have received uh, in, in the groups in, uh, on your table uh, a link, a QR code to join the WhatsApp group. So we have a conference WhatsApp group for all the participants. So I request all of you, uh, it's a high priority, please join the WhatsApp group because uh, uh, it will be very difficult to follow all the announcements um, uh, via email. I know you all are very busy and you may have, be having a couple of emails, email addresses. So we will, I mean, you will not, we, we again will be not able to track, or, I mean, or send emails to all your email addresses. So it's very easy for us to communicate if you can join the WhatsApp group. So the link and the QR code should be on your table now. So please join that. So um, 
that's it about the logistics. But if there are any changes, we'll be making announcements from time to time. Right. So that's all about uh, the logistics from my side. But the one problem you may have if you uh, if you're focusing on the agenda is like we are having a couple of breakout sessions, right? So the the main question you most of you will be having is which one should I join, right? So you have enough time to make that decision. And it's a bit bit of a challenge for us also. Like we have to uh, figure out like what are the uh, interests and maybe like uh, if we know uh, what your interests are, we can cater and tailor made some of the content to suit the requirements. So to help with that, our team has um, uh, organized the, I mean, we are going to do a brief uh, Mentimeter session, a poll. So uh, may I kindly kindly invite Shurajit Datta from uh, his PYO team uh, to please come forward um, and proceed with the poll. So while we are getting ready, uh, may I kindly invite all of you to join the WhatsApp group? Yeah. So let's see. Uh, I think our team is monitoring how many uh, have joined. Yeah. Um, okay, everyone. Yep. So I'm uh, Shurji Dutta from the from Hispa University of Oslo. And I'm just going to be helping a bit with uh, some of the organization for the week. So if you do have any questions about some of this stuff, please feel free to ask me. Um, if you could just please join this Mentimeter link, you can use your mobile device or you can access it via your computer. You can scan the QR code or you can enter the details manually. Okay, so we'll just give everyone a minute or so um, in order to join, all right? And just about while you're while you're doing this, I'll just discuss a couple other things. So regarding the new agenda that Saurabh showed you earlier in the morning with all the links for all the sessions um, and then all the rooms, we're going to send that out in a, in a little bit, just once we finish this, so we can assign the plenary, uh, or sorry, the parallel sessions um, for later on today. And then we'll also be in that same email sharing with you a Google Drive folder that will contain all of the materials for the week, okay? So you can expect that, uh, you know, around the tea break or just shortly after the tea break, okay? And we'll make sure that everyone's received that. And, you know, if you find midway through the day you still can't access the materials, um, please feel free to contact myself or um, any of the organizers, and we can assist you in accessing the materials, the agenda, etc. So if you want any of your colleagues to join remotely, for example, via the Zoom links, um, you can also do that. All right. Okay. And this is a self-paced poll, so you can work through the questions a bit faster if you've already joined. Uh, but I'll just leave this up for a moment while everyone's joining.
just to give everyone another minute here, I can see some people. And you can answer the questions if you've already joined. We can see some responses already, right? Yeah, yes, yes, I am, I will. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah. But I see some people answering the questions already. That's great. So we'll be able to see the responses as uh, after people have joined. Okay. Sure, sure. Okay, so I understand some of you are not connected to the internet. So uh, we'll give you a moment uh, while we sort that out. I apologize for that. And just if you're not able to scan the code, you can enter this manually, okay? So you can go to the web address, menti.com, and enter the code that's at the bottom underneath, okay? So you can use either method, whatever works. Okay, you don't, if you can't scan the code because you're far in the back and it's not registering on your phone, you can just enter menti.com in your browser um, and enter the code manually as well, okay? But we'll just sort out the internet issue um, and then we'll kind of proceed from there. So I can see we have about half the audience in, 54 people. So I guess uh, we're just waiting for the others.
think we're okay, actually. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it looks like a lot of people have responded. We have over 80 responses for each question. So uh, thank you very much for providing this feedback. Uh, we'll update the agenda, and then we'll share that with you along with the materials folder, okay? Um, so that way you'll know which room to go for the parallel sessions. Um, yeah, thank you. We have quite a few responses at this point. So I think we're okay. Um, and we will share all the materials, the updated agenda, and you can also allow your colleagues to join uh, via Zoom if you would like. Okay, so I would please ask everyone to go back to their original seat and get settled again um, so we can continue with the session. And, and for that, I'll ask my colleague Saurabh um, to come up um, once again. Okay, so please, if everyone can go back, uh, just settle down, uh, okay, because we'll start with the session again. Thank you very much for providing your feedback um, so we can organize ourselves for the remainder of the conference. Um, please, everyone, if you could sit down and get back to your seat, we'd really appreciate it, yeah? You can take photos during the break, okay? No problem. We'll do it again. So good morning, everyone. I think we are ready to start again. So my name is Ola. I'm a deputy director of the HISP Center at the University of Oslo. Um, and Sorab and I, we will give you a brief background and some uh, overview of the HISP network and the work we are doing. I think we already heard some great stories from the opening from Professor Vajira about what happened in Sri Lanka. And I think that's a very good example of how the HISP network operates. It was also mentioned that uh, my colleague Jörn Bra, he started this back in 1994, 30 years ago. Um, and HISP is a global action research network initiated uh, in South Africa as a collaboration between, Univer between University of Oslo and University of Western Cape uh, with objective to strengthen health information systems. So the HISP Center, as we are called at the University of Oslo, we lead the DHS2 uh, platform software development. Um, but that is not all we do. We also have a lot of activities around local innovation, capacity building, and research. And this combined with software development, I think has been really kind of the key uh, to success uh, of the DHS2 and the HISP network. Um, and I think we heard some really good examples from Sri Lanka how those are combined with local capacity, innovations, and, and the platform to innovate on. So this work is financed and endorsed by many global health partners, including NORAD, the Norwegian Agency for Development that started uh, with us back in 94, the Global Fund, PEPFAR, Gavi, CDC, UNICEF, Gates Foundation, USAID, and WHO are also partners and investing in the platform. So we are also a WHO collaborating center um, focusing on strengthening health information systems. As we heard from Pamud in the morning, the HIS is now used uh, across the world by ministries of health in 81 countries. And there are more than 30 countries in Asia Pacific and the MENA region using the platform. And you saw this map. Um, I think what we can add here is that, and I think you heard it in the morning, DHI is being used for RMACH, for nutrition programs, for COVID surveillance, COVID vaccination. And you saw all the topics here around logistics. Uh, there are many, many use cases DHI supports, also beyond the health sector. Uh, here in Sri Lanka, it's also used by Ministry of Education, and many other countries do the same. It's also used in water and sanitation, in nutrition, um, and more recently, also in climate. And we'll talk more about that uh, this week. Uh, Austin, the tech lead for the digital software development, will give some updates on, on the new releases later today. 
But it's important that uh, DHS2 has a community-driven roadmap. So we develop uh, new features all the time and release uh, every year uh, a new version of DHS2, and that's based on your feedback. So we need your interaction. We need to hear from you uh, what you would like to see on the platform, how you would like to improve it, and then we'll do our best to be able to respond. That's how we operate. So this network, uh, there are many regional HISP groups, um, many in the room today, and these are really um, critical in building sustainable systems in partnership with the governments. And these are regional and in-country experts providing capacity building, technical support, and guidance on the HS2 implementations. And most importantly, they are a, a long-term uh, partner to governments, to min ministries of health and education, a trusted partner in that state. Beyond projects, beyond funding cycles, they are there sometimes for life. And that's important in reaching sustainability. There's also a lot of collaboration between his groups and local universities. I think we heard some really good examples here from Sri Lanka, the master's program. This is happening around the world in many countries. And the HISP groups also participate in the research, action research program that we coordinate from University of Oslo. And when local, uh, local innovations happen in countries with the HISP groups and the governments working together, like we saw with COVID here in Sri Lanka, these are shared across the network to other groups and then implemented in other countries around the world. The COVID innovation that was first implemented here was later than enhanced and used in more than 50 countries around the world during the pandemic. So there are 23 his groups in total in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. You can see them all listed here with the Asian groups on top. And this is a network of partners that share a set of core values related to promoting open source software and local ownership, uh, supporting sustainable systems, supporting integrated approaches and not fragmentation, and fostering data use. And all the HISP groups sign an MOU uh, with the University of Oslo where they commit to following these core values. And these groups are endorsed and funded by many local uh, global partners like the Global Fund, Gavi, UNICEF, UNFPA, NORAD, and the CDC. And by working with the, with the governments and all these partners, his groups offer a coordinated way uh, to support countries being able to align uh, partner investments and initiatives uh, for the better for the government and the DHS2 implementations. So I'll hand it over to Sorab to talk more about the HISP work in the Asia region. Thank you. Thanks, Ola. So I'll just give a quick background on the regional HISP hubs. Uh, the whole purpose behind setting up the HISP hubs was to create a new model for uh, enhancing the DHS to country support. Uh, the initiative was led by Global Fund, but slowly we have been uh, presenting this hub model to many partners, and we have some examples ahead where we see how the hub model was used for more coordinated uh, DHIS2 technical assistance in different countries in the Asia region. So um, the setup is that three his groups serve as a home entity of the regional hub. So we have three uh, regional hubs uh, in his group based in Central Africa, his group. Um, uh, East and Southern Africa, and then we have the Asia uh, hub. So we have seven members uh, presently in the HISP Asia hub. So using the hub model, we have been able to uh, provide a more regional based approach for country coordination uh, and uh, working with the DHS to partners and investors um, uh, in the Asia region. So we have his group uh, India, who's leading the HISP Asia hub. Followed and the members are his Vietnam, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and more recently we had his Indonesia and his Pakistan join the Asia Hub uh, last year. And this year, uh, moving forward next year, we have a new his group for Middle East and Northern Africa who will be joining the his Asia Hub as a formal member. So the objectives and expectations behind the uh, operations at his Asia Hub is to create a formal network to support the his groups in the region, both technically and administratively. Uh, the biggest uh, advantage here is to uh, promote the coordination and cooperation in between the his groups in activities related to information systems strengthening at country and the regional level. Uh, we're able to build better collaboration with funding partners 
uh, giving them an opportunity to ease out the administrative procedures to uh, have a joint contract with the Asia Hub and let his groups work in different countries uh, where the interventions are being planned. Uh, through this Asia Hub model, we have been able to uh, build a shared expertise where we have combined resources from different case groups in both technical and implementation stands and have been able to carry out the needs assessments for HMIS and have influenced the design of HMIS work planning and budgeting uh, in some countries and we uh, want to do more uh, moving forward. Uh, we, uh, through this opportunity, uh, supported by Global Fund, we have had the opportunity to meet uh, once a year, all the his groups gathered together. Uh, we had a similar internal annual meeting uh, on Monday and Tuesday this week. So we have some details on that, on what were the uh, joint discussions. So uh, at the beginning of the week, we uh, seven his groups in Asia, we met and had the second uh, his Asia annual meetup uh, in Sri Lanka, where we discussed uh, all the updates of the past work done uh, when we last met in December 2022. So each his group shared the updates of the uh, achievements and the challenges that they faced in their implementations and what lessons were learned and how we can further improve uh, the uh, quality of the implementations in, in respective countries. Uh, we also had the opportunity to share local innovations done uh, because each of the country in the region works in different dimensions and it requires local innovations uh, on top of DHIS to, to make the implementations more sustainable. So we, his group shared the innovations that were done and how these innovations could be utilized by other his groups as well in their respective countries. Uh, we tried to discuss the common priorities across the countries which the his groups can address and uh, can make better solutions for those. And we also identified some opportunities for joint collaboration and support to benefit the DHS implementations in the countries that we are supporting. Just to give a quick progress update on the, the regional work that was carried out in last couple of years through the Global Fund Data SI project. So the HISP Asia Hub worked together with the HISP groups in the region to carry out DHIS to maturity assessment, which is a framework for determining the maturity of the implementation and identifying the strength and the weaknesses in the implementations and how interventions can be planned accordingly. So these assessments were done in six countries. Myanmar, Afghanistan, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and Nepal. Uh, following the assessments, uh, the uh, DHS to technical assistance activities were planned, which was supported by Global Fund financially, and his groups work are completed and are, some of the activities are still in progress, which included building capacities of the DHS to core team. So academies were planned in country for building capacities of the Ministry of Health colleagues. Uh, we carried out DHS to metadata assessments to understand the quality of the metadata and the challenges which came out of the assessment and how these challenges can be resolved. Uh, uh, version upgrades, so we carried out version upgrades in selected countries to ensure that the um, countries stay as close as possible to the latest DHS releases and can benefit from the features available in the DHS to applications. Uh, we had implementation of HIV, TB, and malaria packages, both for data collection as well as dashboards. And we are also implementing the health facility profile toolkit as a pilot in a couple of countries to collect semi-permanent data from health facilities related to their infrastructure, human resources, administration data, et cetera. Uh, we were able to build a successful partnership with the UNFPA, Asia-Pacific Regional Office, to support uh, seven countries in the region, uh, primarily focusing on the SRM and CH program. So uh, under this initiative, uh, seven countries underwent an uh, HMIS assessment focused on the SRM and CH uh, practices, uh, which were Lao, uh, PNG, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Timor, Maldives, and Nepal. And his groups worked together in carrying out these assessments with the UNFPA country teams. Uh, and the the majority, the most uh, important need that came out of the assessment was the idea to build capacity of the country on DHIS2. Therefore, in 2023, the idea was to build capacity in these seven countries. So for this, we conducted three webinars for the NFPA countries in the region on data use in DHIS2, DHIS2 data analytics features, and data quality and use of DHIS2 for data quality. So the recordings of these webinars are available, so we can share these recordings with the participants so they can benefit out of the webinars that were conducted for the UNFPA team. 
In addition, we had an in-person workshop in Bangkok where UNFPA invited participants from the above six countries uh, and which was supported by uh, Shurajit, his Pindya and his Vietnam team uh, in uh, guiding them on management of the DHIS2 implementations, the governance and the strengthening the implementation plus features on data analytics and data quality uh, toolkits as well. Uh, more recently, we started working on an EMOC facility assessment toolkit where uh, the health facilities which are uh, providing BMOC and CMOC services, they are being assessed uh, based on the uh, questionnaire that has been developed by UNFPA. So that toolkit is being developed uh, at present and will be released as an implementation toolkit with, which other countries can utilize and modify to their context and collect data collection and the analytics uh, for the EMOC assessments. So pilot is very soon planned in Nepal uh, for the EMOC facility assessment. So that was a quick update of the work that has been carried out in the respective countries in the Asia region. I uh, think we uh, we are uh, we are at the end of the first session here. So unless there are any questions for Ola and myself, uh, we can uh, proceed for the tea break. Yeah. So if there are any questions, please feel free to ask us. We will be happy to answer. So the tea is served outside. Uh, please uh, feel free to uh, have the uh, arrangements. And uh, we start again at uh, 11. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, back again regarding logistics. So. Uh, uh, we got to know like some of you who are not staying in this hotel are having issues connecting to internet. So uh, what you can do, uh, we will project the information very soon, uh, but you may follow the steps. So uh, there is an open Wi-Fi network with the SSID called Taj Samudra. Uh, and also I, I must mention like all the in-house guests, please uh, use the uh, Wi-Fi access that has been provided to you by the hotel when you checked in. Please use that, it will work here as well. But for all the guests who do not have any internet access, uh, we'll, I'm, I'm just telling you the steps to connect to internet. Um, so there is this Wi-Fi uh, SSID called Taj Samudra. It's an open network. Please connect that. We'll be displaying this information very soon. Uh, just connect to that. And then once you connect, you will be directed to a landing page uh, in which you will have to select uh, the option conferences and events, okay? And once you do that, uh, there is a Wi-Fi code. Uh, so we'll be displaying the code shortly. You can use that code and then you will be connected to the conference Wi-Fi, right? So uh, while our tech, uh, tech team is preparing that information to be displayed here, uh, what we are going to have next is uh, unfortunately not the T. Before that, we need to take the conference uh, photograph. Otherwise it will be very difficult uh, coordinating with everyone uh, to the uh, photo location. So uh, what, what we want all of you to do uh, in two minutes is to, uh, is to go down. Our team will be outside directing you uh, to the location where we are going to take the group photograph. So uh, please follow the directions uh, from our group. And then uh, we'll, we'll all go down and take the group uh, photograph. And once we come back up here, the tea and the snacks will be uh, served in the foyer area just outside. Okay. Uh, I'm waiting for the team to display the, yeah, right, will it take long? So while they are doing it, uh, those of you who have connected to the Taj Samudra network, the Wi-Fi access code is VIP2023, okay? It's gonna be VIP, we all know very important people, yeah? VIP2023. I will repeat the code again, Wi-Fi access code, which, uh, which is VIP2023. So those of you who are not in-house guests, please use that code to connect to internet. 
So the information uh, to how to connect the steps on how to connect to the internet will be displayed shortly. Right. Um, so I think that's it for the uh, inauguration ceremony and the morning session on day one. So I think we can all uh, now go down to take the group photo. And once you are back, uh, the Wi-Fi access details will be displayed here. Right. Thank you so much. So uh, Mr. Gishan from our team will uh, lead you all. Yes, Gishan. Yes, please.